Hey guys, welcome back to Makeable Syrup Tech. I'm Rick, and today we're going to be reviewing the Cooler Master Hyper 212 Evo CPU Cooler. So we're continuing on with our CPU Cooler series, but we're done with the best coolers under 20. So we're moving to the next range, which is the best coolers between 20 and 30 dollars. We're going to be seeing coolers with a few more features, a little bit better design, but overall we're going to see if it's worth investing the extra money. And the reason we're starting with the Cooler Master Hyper 212 is because this is going to be our new baseline. As we did the basic Ryzen coolers, the stock coolers for the best under 20, for the best between 20 and 30, we're going to go with what currently I would say is the most well-known worldwide cooler for a budget system build, which is the Hyper, the Hyper 212 Evo from Cooler Master. So before, for those of you out there that do not know about the cooler, let's start with a quick overview. So the Cooler Master Hyper 212 Evo offers four direct contact copper heat pipes and an aluminum fin stack. It's a classic tower style design and it comes with a 120 millimeter fan with a max RPM of 2000 and a four pin connector so it is PWM compatible. Uh, cooler Master rates that this cooler is compatible for up to 180 watts TDP and it has an overall dimension of uh, 159 millimeters high by 116 millimeters wide and 51 millimeters deep. The Cooler Master Hyper Evo 212 is compatible with all modern sockets all the way up to AM4, which we'll talk about a little bit extra in a couple of seconds. So if we look there's a couple of other details I want to go, uh, go over about this cooler. Number one, it is AM4 compatible, but for anyone that already has one, and probably I'm, I don't think they've started boxing them yet with the Hyper 212s, uh, you're going to need the extra Cooler Master bracket. Uh, because it, unfortunately it isn't AM4 compatible right out of the box, you have to order this from Cooler Master. It is free for the moment, however you still have to pay for the shipping. So for example, mine here in Canada cost me $7 to ship to me so that my Hyper uh, 212 would be compatible with AM4. Basically what you get in this pack, it's very simple, you get uh, four standoff screws and you get uh, basically an extra X bracket which is compatible with AM4 with an awesome instruction booklet. But basically it's the same as installing it on AM3 other than um, that the spacing is different which is why you need a new bracket. Um, other things to know about this cooler is that it does come with the mounting uh, brackets for a second fan, meaning that if you do want to install a, a push-pull configuration on this cooler, it is possible. Uh, however, if you want my honest opinion, the fin stack, uh, the aluminum fin stack seems a little bit um, small for a push-pull configuration. I'm not sure it's actually going to get that much more airflow going through there just because uh, the fin stack is too uh, is too condensed. However, you know it left it's left to be seen. We can test that in a future video. But the other reason also I would say that I'm although it's an added bonus that Cooler Master offers, I find it sort of you know unnecessary. There is that basically if you put the cost of buying a second decent fan on this cooler to have a push pull configuration, well the cost for an extra fan which is like between ten and fifteen bucks is going to put you into the territory where this cooler is going to be competing with coolers that already have two fans included with bigger aluminum stacks and pretty much, you know, in my opinion, will have an overall better performance. But nonetheless, it is an added bonus that they put in there. Um, also, quickly, if you go look, the MSRP on this in the US is actually $35, if I'm not mistaken, and $40 in Canada. The reason why I'm placing it in the bracket of between $20 and $30 is that honestly, this is one of those coolers which it fits in perfectly with the Cooler Master sort of uh, marketing plan where it's always on sale. You can look at different, different vendors and you'll always find this cooler on sale for at least 10 bucks off. So in Canada, you can generally easy find, easily find it for 30 bucks or less, in the US for 25 or less. And honestly, if you want my pure opinion, if it's on sale, if it isn't on sale, I mean, don't buy this cooler because it's not, it doesn't go more than like a week or two without having some kind of major discount. 
and it fit like I said, it fits into the cooler master master plan. They always set their, their MSRPs, in my opinion, a little higher than what they're actually aiming at, and they offer you discounts so that you really feel like you're always getting like an awesome deal when you buy the coolers. I'm not saying you're not getting a good deal, but it's part of their plan so that you feel like you're always getting a better deal than uh, maybe what is actually what you, you know than than would you would actually be. Okay, so you know. Overall, uh, we're going to start with the numbers. So before that, I'm just going to explain really quickly the methodology. So all my t testing right now for the Ryzen update is done on a Ryzen 3 1200, which is overclocked to 3.9 gigahertz using 1.3 volts, which is a overclock that most people most people should attain, be able to attain on a Ryzen 1200. I didn't see the point of testing it higher than that because uh, you know, I won't test at, at voltages and frequencies that most people will not be able to hit, even though my CPU can go a little bit higher. And for sound uh, testing, well, I'm using my portable sound meter. It's placed about one foot away from the my open air test bench, and I'm capturing the sound emitted by the, by the uh, cooler at that distance, which is about equivalent to someone who has a gaming tower and games, you know, on their desk and games beside it. So it'll give you a real world scenario of what you're, you'll be hearing. Because often on the boxes, the uh, manufacturers are gonna say like, that the maximum decibels are 36 decibels, but they're not telling you at what distance they're testing it. So if you're like 10 feet away, of course, it'll be sounding less, it, it'll be less important to sound, but at the same time, no one games 10 feet away from their tower on average. So let's get to the numbers. Let's start with temperature performance. So the Cooler Master Hyper Evo is actually a very strong performer uh, in the you know cooling performance. We're looking at a uh, delta temperature of 26 degrees because, by the way, the temperatures you see are the temperatures above ambient, so I adjust for the ambient temperature. So it's a 26, and so far it's the best performing cooler. However, right now we're only comparing it to coolers that were under $20, so it's not a big surprise that this one will be getting us a better result. Uh, if we move over now to sound performance, this is generally where unfortunately the Cooler Master budget products lose a little bit of their glare. Uh, so sound performance, as you can see in the graph, uh, we're at 52 decibels, which places it among some of, unfortunately, the noisier coolers that we have. But at the same time, it's a 2000 RPM fan, which is spinning pretty fast. Some of the other coolers on this uh, graph have a maximum RPM of 1600. Um, but I'll be honest with you, if you're running this cooler at full load very often, it is a noticeable sound. So if you're in the room and you're not gaming with a headset or simply it's in a family room and you know the CPU is going to be pushing hard all the time, you're going to hear this cooler. Because by the way, all my tests are done at 100% on the fan. So I lock the fan at 100% so that we really know that if you're pushing these coolers to the max, what kind of what kind of noise you can expect from them so you know overall this is a very good cooler it's there's the reason why I said it before my my reference design as well is because I'm always a couple of coolers ahead so I know right now where it's situated compared to at least two or three other coolers is that cooler master is offering a product that's a really good all-arounder it's not as we're going to see it further, it's maybe not going to be the highest performing cooler, but it's not the noisiest either. However, it's not the quietest either. So it's a good all arounder. When you're buying this cooler and it's on sale for like $25, you're never getting a bad deal out of, out of it. I'm just going to, we're just going to see over in the next few days if you're actually getting the best deal. But anyone who like is a first time overclocker, a first time builder, uh, you can't go wrong with the Hypermaster EVO 212, but there is one thing that is very important that you check. It's that this is a very high cooler. We're going to see over the next few days, the other coolers, Cooler Master's products are actually pretty high, meaning that unfortunately they won't fit into every case. And that's a major problem because a lot of the very popular budget cases, because you know we're focusing right now on budget builds, um, a lot of the popular budget cases out there, for example, the Bitfinex Nova, which is which I use to build my daughter's computer out of, uh, will not fit this cooler. The, the, the fin stack is too high, you won't be able to close the case with the cooler in it. 
because 159 millimeters will see over the next few days. Most other cooler designs are almost two centimeters lower, which is pretty noticeable and will fit a lot more builds. So it is something very important that you guys check before buying this cooler for your build is check the clearance on for your CPU to cooler. Normally all cases will tell you what the clearance is and make sure it fits because unfortunately this is one of the coolers that you'll fall into the category where if you're going for a budget or a smaller build, a lot of cases won't fit it, unfortunately. And, you know, so overall, can I recommend the Cooler Master Hyper Evo 212? Yes. Is it necessarily going to be the best choice? Well, we'll have to wait over the next few weeks to, to see. But for the money you're investing, you're not getting a bad product. So if you have a Cooler Master Hyper Evo 212, you're moving to Ryzen. As long as your case supports it and you get the bracket, it's, it's worth it. Like for $7, it's better than buying a new cooler because the performance will still be there. I wouldn't be scared to overclock all the way up to a Ryzen 7 with this cooler. So, you know, we're actually getting into territory where now even Ryzen 7, it's not a problem. And if you're running on the Intel side, if you're running an i7, I would say anything under an i7 77K or 87K now, uh, you're probably going to be okay. With a 77K or 87K, we're not talking about budget builds anymore, so I don't think you'll be wanting to invest in this type of cooler. I would recommend with going probably with something beefier, but anything under that, you're probably going to be okay with this cooler, as long as you're not going to be trying to push the overclock necessarily to the ultimate maximum or whatnot. So I hope you guys liked the review today. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments down below. I try to answer everyone as best I can. Uh, anyone that wants to help the channel out directly, my Patreon link will be in the description down below. For the moment, um, there aren't many Patreon backers, but if you guys do become, the channel will be able to grow faster. I'll be able to come out with more reviews, get more products more quickly. Because for the moment, I'm not sponsored by anyone, so all of this is out of pocket, which is why sometimes there can be a few days in between reviews because I have to get the products in. Um, and lastly, um, you know, likes and subscribes are always appreciated, and I hope I'll see you guys all in my next video.